Should taking pictures on cruise ships, well, should that be banned? What does it matter how late I show up for dinner? I should be accommodated. And what do you mean you're gonna force me to use a lanyard for my cruise card? Yep, it's once again time for what every cruiser wants. Chris here with High Seas Cruising and welcome to today's video and another episode of what every cruiser wants where I'm going to read three cruise comments to you of people that want things changed on cruise ships. They don't understand how things work on cruise ships or they just read something on the internet and automatically assume that it must be true and accurate information even though it's the silliest thing you've ever heard. Now first, we're gonna start off with taking pictures, taking videos in public spaces on board cruise ships. Especially in this day and age, you know, everybody's got a smartphone, everybody's got a camera, everybody's always taking pictures of everything. And I do agree that if you are taking pictures, you should do your absolute best to be respectful of those around you. And I feel that most people are. But if you're up on the Lido deck, if you are in public spaces on board cruise ships, your expectation of privacy should not be super, super high. You're talking thousands of people all together on one ship. You're bound to have people in the background of your pictures. I know it is hard sometimes to keep people out, but according to this comment, they think it should be banned and nobody should be allowed to do it. People should not be allowed to take random photos of me or anyone on the deck, catching some sun, line dancing, or just hanging out with my partner on the boat. I see you put up videos and photos of this all the time that you or another passenger has taken. This is not lawful. I have a good friend that had a picture of her and her sister at SeaWorld that showed up on TikTok. This should be made clear to your passengers and a notice made to everyone that taking photos or videos of anyone but your own family unless verbal permission is given. Maybe you should consider having no photos or videos be placed on the sun decks and clubs and bars. So no pictures on the sun decks, the Lido decks up by the pools, no pictures in bars, no pictures in any of the clubs. What do you guys think about that? Like I said, we're talking about the expectation of privacy in public spaces. First of all, it is absolutely not unlawful. And like I said, I agree that you should try to be respectful as possible. You're never gonna have really a whole lot of opportunities when you're not gonna have a bunch of people in the background. Now, you should not be specifically taking a picture, let's say, of a stranger. I get that. I understand that, but like I said, if you're out and about in a public space, a large public space like the Lido deck, you may end up in somebody's pictures. Now, this is something I experience all of the time because I take a lot of pictures. I make videos on board cruise ships and I purposely try not to put a whole bunch of people in the background, but I can tell you the challenges that that also brings because there's people just about everywhere. Now, if you've ever watched one of my ship tour videos, one of the questions that normally comes up on those videos is where is all the people? And the reason you almost never see a bunch of people is because I shoot those videos super, super early in the morning, like 4 a.m. in the morning, so you can get more of the ship and I don't have as many people in the background and I don't have to worry about it quite as much as you would, let's say if I tried to do it in the middle of the afternoon. So I do try to be a little respectful of it, but. Like I said, you can't have a huge expectation of privacy in a public space, but let me throw it over to you guys. What do you guys think? Should they ban pictures and videos in public spaces on cruise ships? Or if you really want privacy, maybe going to your cruise cabin is the best thing you can do. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Being late in the main dining room for your scheduled dining time. Now, depending on how much time we're talking, we're talking, you know, two or three minutes, five minutes, that's probably not a really big deal. But when you start getting into large amounts of time, you are interfering with the processes in the main dining rooms. They got to get the first seating in. You got to go through your appetizers. You got to go through your main courses. You got to go through dessert. You got to give people time to enjoy. And you also have to give time to the wait staff 
to reset the dining room for the second seating. So yeah, being excessively late to the dining room is an issue, it is a problem. But for this next comment, they think because they have a child, that the wait staff should just be understanding no matter how late they are. You were talking on this page today about children in the dining room. I feel obligated to tell you that my wife and four-year-old had some serious problems with our waiter at dinner. We had the 6 p.m. dinner and sometimes we would be late by 20 minutes. Having a four-year-old will cause delays as any parent will tell you. Our waiter seemed annoyed by this. We paid good money and should have been given time and not rudeness. All right, so what do you guys think about this one? Now, as a parent myself, I was aware of the habits of my children. I knew which ones were gonna take longer. I knew which ones needed an extra nudge in the right direction if we were trying to get somewhere on time. And that just meant as a parent that if I had to start getting ready 45 minutes earlier to make sure that the girls were ready on time, well, then that's just something I had to do. I didn't necessarily believe that because I wasn't doing my job as a parent, that the place we were supposed to be to at a certain time should simply wait and accommodate me and understand me. Especially, like I said, they have to get people in, get them fed, reset the dining room for the second seating in the dining rooms. That's got to be a lot of work. And had it been, you know, three, four, or five minutes, I could get it. I can understand it, especially, you know, you're still trying to get people in the dining room and get them seated. But when you start getting to 20 minutes or more, that can start to be a little bit of an issue. And maybe the parents should rethink their strategy for being on time. But what do you guys think? Were these people right in demanding that the dining room should have simply given them more time because they're parents and people must understand that? Or do you think as parents, Perhaps they should have known their child and been better prepared to be to places on time. Let me know what you guys think about this one and being late to the dining room. Now we've talked about this one before. This is the one where somebody reads something on the internet and they start to think that it's true or they believe it enough that they ask about it. And sometimes I have to wonder how do these people even make these kind of cruise stories up. It's like, are you sitting there one day and you think, let me write something absolutely ridiculous and put it out there to people that, hey, guess what the cruise line is gonna do to you next? But it's it's just outlandishly silly, especially when you can't imagine why the cruise line would do it. And I think this next comment is a great example of that. Question for you, is it true what this person is saying? Check the link. If the OP is right, there will be some angry cruisers for sure. I am vehemently an anti-lanyard. Inconvenient, uncomfortable, and tacky. My sister who cruises with me has a very sensitive neck and shoulders, so can't bear the thought of any weight on it. Cruise card goes in my cell phone pocket. Now we all have to wear them on the lanyards at all times? On the ship? Please tell me the OP is full of it. Most people are like me and hate this. Thank you. All right, so they read that the cruise line is gonna force and require everybody to put their sign and sale card on a lanyard and it has to be around their neck at all times. You can't possibly put it in your pocket, your purse, or any other place that you may carry it because somebody wrote it on the internet and somebody went and thought that it might be true. And this is what I mean by just something absolutely silly, like the cruise lines is utterly concerned at all to whether or not you're wearing your cruise card on a lanyard or putting it in your pocket, as long as you have it with you when you need it. But I do wanna throw in there that they made sure that they put in there for you, that most people are just like them and hate cruise lanyards, because you know they know what most people want. And while I will agree, there are probably tons of people out there who don't use a lanyard, don't want to lose, don't want to use a lanyard. I don't think it's most people because, you know, I've been on an awful lot of cruises. I've seen an awful lot of lanyards. So while it's not required, I'm not sure that most people don't like them. But when it comes to cruising and it comes to how you want to cruise, you want to wear it on a lanyard, wear it on a lanyard. You want to put it in your pocket, put it in your purse, 
you know, whatever the case may be, you do you. Because the cruise lines, well, they don't really care where it is as long as you have it with you when you need it. But you guys let me know what you think. How do you like to use your cruise card? Do you like it on the lanyard? Do you maybe have that little pocket that goes on the back of your phone? Put it in your pocket, put it in your purse. I know when Tiffany doesn't have pockets, it's it, hers is in my pocket. So maybe you like to have your significant other carry it for you. Because I've been that guy sometimes too. You guys let me know what you think about this particular comment. And that's going to be our video today for what every cruiser wants. They seem to get a little bit weirder week after week. But these are here to let you guys know that this is how you want to cruise because these people know what most everybody wants when they are out sailing. Well, I hope you have enjoyed today's video. If you have, do me a favor and hit that like button. If you haven't done so yet, do me a favor and hit subscribe. It is free to do so. Helps our channel grow. Let you know anytime we put out a new video. Hope everyone out there is having a really great day. And like always, we will see you out on the high seas.